Where should the focus be for my upcoming keynote? How do I avoid spamming my database? Can I start another business in my 50s? Should I run an online survey? Can I have your podcast workflow? (laughs) These are just some of the questions you've been sending me over the past few months. And today, I'm going to answer them. It's episode 469 of the award-winning small business big marketing show, thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow and American Express. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to your weekly dose of marketing madness. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner, ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it absolutely deserves to be. Today's episode 469 is made possible thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow and American Express, whose business cards are designed for business owners just like you. Very big show today. I tackle a few of the questions you wonderful people have been sending me over the last few months. I reckon there'll be something in there for everyone. I've got some massive news about next week's episode. I am so, so, so excited. I hope you will be too. And another highly motivated listener wins over $1,000 worth of prizes in this week's Monster Prize Draw. As per usual, team, there is marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Now, I cannot hold onto this news any longer. I need to tell you about next week's guest. Her name is Melanie Perkins. She has a website, just a little old website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. She's 31 years old. She's from Western Australia. Her business was recently valued at $3.6 billion. That's with a B. She's got 600 staff. She's got 15 million customers. I mean, it's just an incredible story. And I was lucky enough to catch up with Melanie in her very cool seven-story purpose-built office and had a wide-ranging and very revealing chat about how she has built that empire and is only 31 years old. It's incredible. Uh, That is next week. And thanks for all the messages from many of you saying how excited you are to hear that I have another podcast about to launch. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's called The Idea Exchange. And for the past few months, I've been dropping in on some of Australia's most successful entrepreneurs into their like businesses, face-to-face stuff, and quizzing them about all aspects of their business, from work-life balance to company culture to growth strategies and plenty more. Season one drops in September. But in the next few weeks, you'll be the first to hear the trailer. So you have every reason to be very excited. But right now, let's get into your wonderful marketing questions that have been emailed to me over the last few months and that I have been sitting on. The first one is from Emily Harris, who simply demands, I mean asks, uh, in a short tweet, very short tweet, that I hand over my podcast workflow. In fact, her exact words were, hey, Timbo, I'm keen to start my own podcast to grow my jewellery business. Can you tell me how you do yours? (laughs) Don't you love the abruptness of Twitter? Well, Emily, that is a great question, but I have done an entire episode answering that question. It was episode 351, and I'm going to put a link in the show notes for you so you can access it. But basically what I did in that episode, and it, it's a great way to put together a podcast episode, I must say, which is reach out to your listener base via social media or, or your email database and say, what questions have you got about a particular topic? In this case, I put a tweet out and an email out and posted on the show's Facebook page, what questions have you got about podcasting? And I got lots. I got lots and lots. And that's what I did in episode 351, where I answered every single one of them. So, Emily, thank you for your tweet. Uh, You'll find all the details to your answer 
in episode 351. Righto, next question is from Reese Donovan. He says, hey, Timbo, I'm having a debate with my business partner about an upcoming presentation that we're doing, and we've got very different opinions on how we should structure it. Oh, great. So, like, I'm the referee stuck in the middle. The business I am in is animal allied healthcare and rehabilitation. Just like when us humans are sore, we might see a physio, chiro, or massage therapist that we provide that service for the family pet. Goodness me. A little adjustment for uh, little Charlie Bucket. My, that's the name of my dog. <laughs> um, back to Reese's email. We've scored a gig presenting to a room full of veterinarians who are our main source of referrals right after the main presentation, which is on hip replacements in animals. Our goal is to get every vet in that room sending us at least one case in the next three months. That's a good goal. Good thing to walk on stage, having that in the back of your mind, Reese. This will be the best platform that we've had so far to get our message across. So it's important that we nail it. I'm of the opinion that we should focus our presentation on how strengthening and rehabilitation can help their patients with hip problems, because that's what the vets came to the conference for. However, my business partner doesn't want to pigeonhole us as just the hip rehab place, because we can and do a lot more than that. So he wants to talk about a range of things that we can help their patients with. How would a seasoned marketing guru and presenter like yourself handle this one, Timbo? Well, your partner, Reese has fallen into the trap of just wanting to say everything to everyone and hope some of it sticks, right? And I, I get that. So many business owners want to do that in your marketing. But my advice, Reese, would be to focus on the hip issues. Um, it will be a great follow-on from the previous keynote. But the trick here is to make sure that you're really clear that you do offer a range of other services. And that can be a throwaway line at the end, or it could be even something at the start where you say, G'day, my name's Reese Donovan. I'm from the Animal Rehab Clinic, where we do a range of things to help all sorts of animals, I don't know, feel more comfortable, feel chilled. I don't know, you know, whatever that outcome is. But today I'm here to talk to you simply about hip replacements in animals. And then you go into it. A couple of pro tips, Reese. One is have stories to support the facts. Don't just get up on the stage and list a whole lot of facts. That's boring. Have stories that get people leaning in to listening to the facts that you want to share. Don't rely on wordy slides. Please use images, just not lots of words or charts and all that kind of stuff. Maybe have a picture of a spine because that's what you do. I get that. Um, And engage with your delegates at the conference beforehand. Go up to them in the audience before it starts, over drinks, tea, coffee, whatever it is. Introduce yourself. Ask what questions they have and get a sense of where their minds are at in regards to the topic that you're going to talk about. And most importantly, have a really clear call to action in order to meet the goal that you have, which is getting a consult from each and every one of them in the next three months. A um, couple of episodes to listen to, episode 417 with James Rennie. He's the drone guy who uses public speaking to generate a lot of his revenue. And episode 303, where um, I did an entire episode on how to become a professional public speaker. I'll put those links in the show notes over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 469. Reese, thanks for your question. Righto, next question comes from Scott Burns. Scott says, hey, Timbo, I'm looking for some advice on better ways to market my small business, which is called cleanercrates.com.au. It's clean and then the word are crates. It's a little bit confusing. I'll explain why I think it's confusing in a minute. I launched a year ago and growth has been quite slow, maybe because it's confusing. I have a basic email set up regarding autoresponder as I hate spam and have, a, and have trouble getting my head around spamming the few customers I have. 150 contacts with about 100 purchasing within that number. I've been sending out free products to up-and-coming Instagram influencers for a post and a story, pointing out the positive points in our bundles. This is fantastic for exposure and Instagram profile views and all, but that's it. Hardly any of them convert. If I got a small percentage of them converting, I doubt I'd be writing to you. Stay sustainable, Scott Burns. Scott, um... I'll talk about your website in a minute because it's pretty hard to figure out what you do unless you have a closer look. First of all, your email question. 
Get over hating email marketing. Please just get over it. Um, what you need to do is offer value in your emails. Send emails to peeps that answer major questions they have or entertain them or introduce them to things that they didn't know to make their life easier. That's all you need to do. Lose the mindset that all email is spam. It's only spam if it's useless. But do avoid fancy designs. Just do a nice text-based email. I reckon they work really well. Write curious subject lines to get people to open it. Be economical with your words. Don't write essays. And if you want a couple of great episodes on email marketing that I've done, episode 412 with Dan Fagella. He is a master emailer. Speaking of master emails, emailers, uh, episode 131. Wow, that is years and years ago with Chris Tilley. Uh, it's all about email marketing tips. And I've got to tell you, they are as valid today as they were back then. In regards to Instagram influencers, um, keep it up if it's good exposure, I guess, Scott. Um, but you do have a conversion problem on your website. So you might be getting exposure, but when people go to your website, you're not getting the conversion and that's where it's falling down. It's just not immediately obvious what Cleaner Crates does, right? You need to have a more of an e-commerce look. So Cleaner Crates, what they do do for everyone else listening is they send sustainable crates of sustainable type products like toothbrushes and Oh, shaving cream and food storage bags and things like that. I'm not sure shaving cream. I think I made that one up, but it really is quite hard to, to figure out what you do. Have a more e-commerce look on the website. You want examples? Go to powerplanter.com.au and you will see what I mean by an e-commerce site where it is crystal clear what is on sale. And I interviewed Brian Chapman from Power Planter in episode 376. Episode 451 had snotty noses, Laura Klein. That's an AC Commerce website. Even um, last week's episode with Loz and Alex from Will and Bear, episode 468. That is an awesome e-commerce site. I think, Scott, you just need to borrow some lessons from those guys. Um, get your metadata right. Your metadata on each of the page tabs is not very clear. Like, for example, the homepage metadata just says cleaner crates, convenient and affordable sustainable bundles. I'm not sure that's enough. People Are people really looking for that? Um, and lastly, uh, Scott, Create some great content to drive traffic, whether that be a blog around sustainability, a podcast, a YouTube channel, some eBooks, but just create some really solid content that positions you as an expert in this field. Scott, I appreciate your support for the show. I'm sorry I've been so harsh, but I really want you to do well, and I hope that helps. How's your cash flow management going? <laughs> it's certainly not my strong suit. For the first few years of business, I thought my accountant told me to spend more than I earned. Got that wrong, didn't I? Fortunately, American Express business cards are built specifically with business owners just like you and I in mind. Their cards can be used to pay for everyday business purchases, helping you manage your business's cash flow whilst earning rewards along the way. Both their credit and charge cards provide up to 51 days interest-free, reward points that you can convert to travel, gift cards, or pay down the balance on your card. Plus, some of their cards are tailored for you to earn Qantas or Virgin Australia points directly. Gotta love that. We all need a bit of a holiday, I reckon. To find out more and get your cash flow under control, Google Amex Business after the show. Righto, Dean Zellman from MrStitch.com, that's Mr. and then a hyphen, Stitch.com says, Hey, Timbo, I've been running an embroidery business for about 20 years now. We specialize in custom logos for TV, movie, and marketing companies, as well as small to medium-sized businesses. That's a rather, rather large audience you have there, Dean. Our work is very custom, but I just haven't seen any good out-of-the-box marketing tips. Are there any shows of yours that might relate to my business? <laughs> well, yeah, all of them. If you've listened to this show, and I'm guessing you have, you know my view that you don't need to listen to an episode of this show only if it's from if, if I'm interviewing someone within your industry. I think the best ideas come from outside your industry. 
So always kind of have your mind open and be thinking, how can I apply what that person is doing in their industry into my business, even though we're in different industries? So take another listen to a few episodes, Dean, and implement. Um, Now, I'm wondering what you mean, out of the box or outside of the box? Out of the box solutions are ones where you just open the box and apply them. They're not necessarily that good. Outside of the box marketing solutions, they're ones where you get you're thinking a bit more uh, laterally, if you know what I mean, a bit more creatively. So you want some of them, have a listen to episode 388 with Willard Blend's Tom Dixon. He uses his blenders. He loves them and believes in them so much to blend, you know, anything from a hockey puck to an iPad and everything in between. And he does these extreme product demonstrations. And as a result, it's created a bit of a, become a bit of a YouTube sensation. Um, Arthur Greeno, I mention this guy all the time, the Chick-fil-A franchisee in the States. That was episode 270. He goes around breaking Guinness World Records to get attention. Um, In episode 454 recently, Amanda Stevens and I talked about different ways to create epic marketing. And if you want a way to think creatively about your business, go all the way back to episode 75, where I interview a fellow called Phil, called Phil McKinney. He's the vice, was the vice president of um, innovation at Hewlett Packard, and he's created a series of killer questions that get you thinking creatively about your business. Some other ideas for you, Dean, um, approach influences on Instagram and incentivize customers if they share your work on social using the hashtag Mr. Stitch. And after 20 years of being in business, Dino, I would suggest having a two-day planning session. Shut the business down or get it running on just a few of your, your best staff and go away and spend time on your business, not in your business. Dean, I hope that helps. Thank you for your question. Next one's from Amira. She says, hi, Tim. I just want to let you know that I have just started listening to your podcast while driving back and forth to work. Why has that taken you so long, Amira? I've been going for 10 years and this email is only two months old. (laughs) You make my dreary drive worth it. She goes on to say, eight years ago, I sold my business, which was a belly dancing boutique called Amira's Palace that is now in its 32nd year. That's pretty good for a small business. Um, She opened it in 1987. It's still going. Granted, it didn't make big dollars, but it created great pathways for like-minded dancers around Australia. I reckon I could do a bit of belly dancing. Wouldn't be pretty. I could do it. I'm now working full-time, but am itching to get back into my own business and have come up with an idea called Cave Woman. I don't know. She doesn't explain what that idea is, but that's great. You've got an idea. Magic's in the action. But here's her question. I just know my mindset needs to change from what it was from Amira's place, that was the belly dancing school, which I opened with nothing, to this project that needs to make money this time, as I have a mortgage up here. How do I start again in my 50s with no startup funds? Well, Amira, I'm in my 50s. I'm 52. And I just reckon you've got to lose the mindset around age, first and foremost. What, why, why is 50 a hard place to start a business? Shouldn't it be easier? You're wiser. You're smarter. You're better looking. And you should have the ability, the confidence to get out there and do it because you've already got the runs on the board having run Amira's Palace Ballet Dance Boutique for 32 years. Um, get a client. Create the problem. Get a client. And over-service that client so that they tell others. And then get another client a mirror. And invest back into the business each time you get paid. Pay your mortgage, get food on the table, and invest back into the business. But I think your answer to your question is, be proud that you're in your 50s. Be excited that you're about to start a new business. And have the confidence that you've got the runs on the board. And go out there and get yourself a precious client. Come on down. It's Timbo's Monster Prize Draw. Let's have a break from questions and reward another motivated listener for taking some serious marketing action. And today's winner is... (laughs) 
Matthew Harris of the Pedal Empire, which is a guitar pedal business. And Matthew says, hey, Timbo, I've listened to your podcast for a good four or five years. I used to be a flooring contractor installing floating floors, and I would listen to your show every day on my phone. I was starting a very small online store on the side for guitar pedals and loved listening to your show to learn about how to promote it. I ended up finishing the flooring and went into guitar pedals full time and we opened a storefront. Well done. That's inspiring stuff. You've taught me all about social influences. I contacted a few and we ran some Facebook and Instagram competitions, which got me thousands of new followers. Tick. Other lessons came from building a new website and doing things like putting my phone number at the top and making the page look awesome before having to scroll down. I saw that. It's excellent, Matt, how you've put the phone number. Make it easy for people to contact you. That's what it's all about. And making sure, he goes on to say, making sure I gave everyone the opportunity to contact us and sign up to my newsletters. So many things I've learned and implemented thanks to you, and we now have a very prominent store, great staff, and above all, This one brings a tear to my eye. Above all, I'm doing what I love. The website is pedalempire.com.au. Love your show, Timbo, and I continually learn things from it. Cheers, Matthew Harris, the Pedal Empire. Great story, Matt. For sharing that, buddy, uh, you've won a full range of Liars non-alcoholic spirits valued at 500 bucks, a Basin Essentials pack from Say A Skin Care, 79 bucks, 100 bucks worth of Tradies Undies, 50 bucks voucher for Santa Abel PJs, a $100 picnic bag from Sophie Spritz, a My DNA test kit for 99 bucks, a $50 voucher for the beach people, get yourself a round beach towel or something like that, $75 voucher to use at the merchandise company On The Go Sports, a gift pack of novelty socks from Put A Sock On It, that's worth 18 bucks. You get promotion on this show and a backlink in the show notes. Whew. That's pretty good, I reckon, just for writing a little email. I suggest everyone else do the same. Send me an email, tim at timreed.com.au. Tell me one idea you've implemented from this show and how it's impacted your business. And guess what? You win! Righto, back into the questions. This one's from Sam Krieg. Hey, Timbo, I'm a new business owner and I have set up a small podiatry supply business. Um, First question is around my email. I've just listened to an episode where you talk about an unprofessional email. I set mine up as staykinetic at outlook.com and I thought that sounded reasonably professional. Well, did you, Sam? What were you thinking? I didn't want to spend extra money on securing a different email when I thought this one was okay. Is it? (laughs) No, it's not. It's ugly. It's unprofessional. You should have Sam at staykinetic.com or .au. I'm not sure where you are, Sam, but um, I think at, at Outlook or at Gmail or at me or whatever those sort of secondary email addresses are, they look unprofessional. You, you're bigger than that. And you need to adopt the millionaire's mindset, Sam, and, and go and purchase um, a domain and, and get the email attached to it, mate, because it's not going to cost you a fortune, you know. Um, I'm all about cash flow. I get it sometimes. Business can be expensive, but you can afford that, Sammy. You're a big boy. My second question he goes on is, I don't really know where to start with marketing uh, the launch of my business to podiatrists. I have already done a bit of a soft launch with people in my direct network, but I'm in the process of trying to think of ideas to reach podiatry clinic owners outside my per- personal network. Righto, Sam, pen and paper at the ready and everyone else. First thing I'd do is ask those people in your direct network for their top three questions um, in the space that you operate and then send them a personalized video answer to each of them. And they're going to think you're an absolute legend. And all you're going to do is record these videos on your iPhone. And if you want to really trick it up, there's an app called Bongiorno which you can email those videos directly from your phone, see some analytics, all that kind of stuff. Um, that would be a good thing to do. Another thing I'd do, Sam, would be be that guy who keeps podiatrists up to date with all medical supply developments. Be you know, Start a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel. Create the content um, and then send it out as in electronic direct mail, you know, as a, as a newsletter or something like that. Do product reviews, maybe quarterly info evenings where you get key influencers in a room and update them. Find the influencers and make sure they know about you. 
and finally provide content to industry publications. Basically, Sam, what I want you to do, mate, is be the go-to guy when it comes to podiatry supplies and medical supplies to podiatrists. you just got to be the guy who can answer all the questions in Australia. Why not? Someone has to be. And I would suggest listening to episode 326, where I interviewed podiatrist Daniel Gibbs from Posture Podiatry. You know, what you could do, podiatrists would love you for this. Send that, and I would too, send that episode to every podiatrist you know and tell them to listen to it because it shows them how to build an incredible podiatry practice and work less. You're welcome, Sam. Righto, next question is from Troy Hines. Keep them coming. I'm loving this. Hope you are. Troy says, hi, Tim. Love what you do. Just wanted to ask a question about studying marketing. Would it be wise to go off to university and waste four to five years of your life when in today's world, social media is producing hundreds of videos around marketing that helps educate people? Does the qualification really matter? Or would you suggest start in sales, then work your way into marketing as a career? Cheers, Troy. Troy, it's an excellent question. I'm very much the wrong person to ask. I did study marketing. Um, It's how I got to see some of my favorite bands on campus at university. I had an absolute ball. I drank a lot of beer. I met a lot of uh, young women. I had an absolute ball during my marketing days at university. But I must say that times they are changing or the times they have changed, really. I do love the idea of on-the-job experience versus um, going and studying. I think some of the university courses, and it's a sweeping generalization, but they spend too much time in theory and not enough time in practice. (laughs) Hello to all you university lecturers out there. Please don't call me and bash me up. But I think the idea of getting on the hand on the job experience is is just so valuable these days, and really a great way to work your way up the ladder into marketing is by starting in sales because I think any great marketer with sales experience is an incredibly value valuable asset to the company. So I'm not going to say categorically don't go and get qualified, but boy, if you can get yourself a good job and work your way up and learn about the industry and the products or services that you're selling, um, you're going to be uh, on your way to becoming a great marketer anyway, Troy. And mate, keep listening to this show. Could do worse. One of the many reasons I do this show is to help your business get found online, which is a little bit like finding a needle in a haystack. Your business is the needle and the haystack is the internet. So why not improve your chances of getting found by listing on Yellow Online, Australia's number one online directory receiving over 5.2 million searches every month by people looking for stuff, stuff that possibly you sell. Like I'm guessing with that many searches, there'd have to be at the very least a handful of peeps wanting your product or service, right? And guess what? Listing on Australia's largest online directory is free. So you don't really have any excuses. After the show, head over to yellow.com.au to give yourself the best shot at getting found online. Next question is from Roger. Everybody loves Roger. He says, hey, Timbo, I'm a small retail butcher shop, but I'm also pursuing other ventures. I hear a lot about market research, but I don't really know much about it. Where do you start to run an online survey, or is there companies that sell this sort of data? Any info would be great, or reference to a past podcast if you have covered this before. Love the show. It's very helpful, and more importantly, motivating. Roger from The Modern Butcher. Market research. Well, I'm not sure what you're trying to find out, Roger, but I think it's a really good thing to consider, which is something that many small business owners don't, which is to go and do some research and get a kind of a temperature of what your customers and prospects are thinking. Someone who did this really well is Richard Kelsey from Beer Cartel. He talks about an online survey that he put together in episode 435. And again, I'll put all the links that I mentioned in the show notes over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 469. But um, what Richard did was he went and did a survey of craft beer drinkers and then produced the 2018 
Australian Craft Beer Survey. He shared it with media. Um, it was brilliantly put together. In the episode, he describes how he did it. Here's the outcome of him doing it. His revenues increased 34%. He added 17,000 new customers to his database, or they were prospects at that point. Um tens of thousands of dollars in free publicity, and he positioned himself as an industry authority. So you want to learn about market research for small business and doing an online survey, that is a great episode to listen to. So as an idea for you, Roger, I think the 2020 Australian Meat Survey is an awesome idea, asking questions like how often do you eat meat, what are your favourite cuts, what do you view on health, the health benefits of meat, what do you love about going into butcher shops? Just get a lay of the land of what people are thinking around your industry and then go and create that 2020 Australian Meat Survey. I think you might be American. So it could be an American Meat Survey. I'm not sure where you are, Roger. Um, and then let the media know about it and you should get a fair bit of media coverage as did Richard. Um, and if you want to know what questions to ask, all you need to do is do a Google search of your industry and then the words market research questions, and you will get many, many come up. So great question, Roger. If you do it, let me know. Last but not least, while on the topic of meat, we have a question and an idea from Jono, from Jono's Jerky. I love it. Good day, Timbo, he says. I've listened to other business podcasts before, but nothing provides as much value as yours. Pure marketing gold, as you say. My wife and I run a business called Jono's Jerky, where we focus on creating a range of premium, full-flavored beef jerky. I've never got into the beef jerky. I've kind of been tempted. There's actually even a beef jerky shop near where I live. Like they, that's, what, that's all they sell. Oh, and other South African products, I think, too, but the kind of their focus is... Yeah, I'm rattling on. Currently, we're getting ready to launch a new product, which has the potential to totally transform our business and take it to the next level. <laughs> the product I'm talking about, I love this, is a flavor of beef jerky that no one else has done before. Can anyone guess what it is? I don't think you will. It's a cheeseburger-flavored jerky. I actually got the idea after listening to your interview with Philip Cooch, episode 441. That was the guy who was creating gold-plated cronuts, a cross between a donut and a croissant. God, off the back of that, you have got an idea for a cheeseburger-flavoured jerky. I love that. I love what this show is doing out there. I'm emailing to see what other episodes you can think of that are specific to a new product launch or line extension that might be useful for me. Awesome. Have a listen to episode 468. That's last week's episode where the guys from Will and Bear Hat e-commerce store um, approached Instagram, their, their top 100 Instagram photographers. That was a success in launching their business. Um, episode 424 with Dave Munson from Saddleback Leather. He's an expert storyteller and he used stories to launch his saddly, saddly, saddly leathery baggy business. Episode 396 with young entrepreneur, 15-year-old Will Deeth from Will Be Fun. He launched by getting um, really cheap space in some local shopping centers and starting pop-up stores. So you can have a listen to that too, Jono. Hope that helps. And Jono went on to say in his email, I'd like to finish with a tip for your listeners that has worked wonders for me. Every time I listen to an episode of Small Business Big Marketing, I think of other business owners in my network who might enjoy and get good value out of that particular episode. For example, customers, distributors, suppliers, friends, or just someone who I'd like to connect with. It's a simple thing, and people really appreciate that I'm thinking about them. After all, we can get so stuck in our own business bubble a lot of the time. I love that idea, John, that you're sharing my episodes of my show with others, but any content that you see that you think, oh, such and such would really value that, it's such a lovely gift to someone to show that you're thinking about them and it's relevant to their business. So go and do it. In fact, everyone listening, can you just go and find one episode of my show that you think someone else would really benefit from and send them the link? Tell them to subscribe. Podcast success is a lot about subscription. So just make sure you hit the subscribe button on your podcast app. And that way you get the episode immediately that I launch it. Enough of that. Hey, Jonathan, his name is Jonathan Painting. He's from Jono's Jerky. I hope that answered your question. Well, there you go, team. Questions answered. 
That almost wraps up episode 469 of the award-winning Small Business Big Marketing Show. Thanks to digital marketing agency Yellow and American Express. Check out Yellow's suite of products to get your found online over at yellow.com.au and check out Amex's very nice range of business cards by searching Amex Business. Um, if you do have a question, send it to me. I'll answer it at some point, tim at timreed.com.au. But right now, for the next week, if you are listening to this kind of real time, um, just be really excited. Next week's episode 470 with Melanie Perkins from Canva, whose business was recently valued at $3.6 billion, is awesome. I was lucky enough to visit her at her place of work. And I just think it's a, it's an exciting interview. Don't forget there's an entire back catalogue of interviews over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com where you can also buy my marketing book, The Boomerang Effect. If you love the Small Business Big Marketing Show, then let another business owner or 10 know about it by grabbing their phone and subscribing for them. Until next week, I am Timbo Reed. I always have been. I always will be. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.